study great art, like a jazz musician or a fine painter, you realize that they are awesome, not because of the fact that they're just that creative, but because over the years they've been able to master a particular process that pushes out this creativity in a way that's transformative. And I think it's the same way when it comes to something called brainstorming. It's not just something that we do when we get together and we expect the best kinds of results from. It actually takes a process. And I want to share with you some best practices. Number one, the group that's involved really needs to establish some sort of ground rules about how they're going to behave during this conversation. How are we going to elevate the conversation such that we can get the best ideas out of everybody? So that there's trust, that there's the ability to disagree, etc., etc. Number two, we need some sort of context for why we're doing the brainstorming. What's the direction that we're heading? Not to be so specific that limits us, but not so broad that we don't have any direction. And number three, we need to be able to have the brainstorming process be not about the quality of the ideas up front, but about the number of ideas, because that comes later. And then that step is really all about evaluation. Which of these ideas have merit? Which of them do not? Which ones can we put on hold? Which ones should we just completely eliminate altogether? How do we group them together? So on and so forth. And then we come up with a really good, tight list of wonderful ideas that we do want to move forward on, which brings me to the last step, implementation. That's when we assign tasks and goals and ownership to these wonderful ideas. So again, like everything that is inspired, we need to follow a process, and that includes brainstorming.